Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and uh, going to be focusing on a couple of issues going on in the world. And uh, Middle East, of course, definitely is heating up. Uh, Azerbaijan uh, really on the attack against Armenia. Going to kind of look a little bit back into that, dealing with some inside information that we have on this conflict, uh, as well as Iran. Iran is uh, also beefing up, uh, preparing for things uh, that are not looking so good for Iran. Uh, this here happens to be one of their systems that they've acquired from Russia that will allow Iran to be able to detect the F-35 coming in long before it gets there. So it definitely seems that Iran uh, is anticipating a war against its nation uh, by the United States, by Israel, by the United Arab Emirates, who also are acquiring the F-35. I'm sure once the United Arab Emirates have the F-35 in place, we could probably see that war break out very soon. Uh, so <clears throat> we're going to have to kind of be watching closely about these things, what's going on, what's happening there. And uh, I'll quickly just share something with you here. This is uh, some information I've gotten about the uh, Qadir, uh, uh, radar systems that came into Iran uh, not too long ago. So a report from Iran claims that the Revolutionary Guards are, th are thickening their defense systems, according to the report. Two domestically built Qadir, which is uh, translated as Almighty Radar Systems, joined the country's defense network in central province of Yazd and Kerman on Tuesday. The new radars are capable of receiving signals from a distance of 1,100 kilometers and an altitude of 300 kilometers. The first radar of this type was introduced in 2011. Early reports claimed that Iran had purchased a number of such radars from Russia in the past as Reznons and any model. A Russian report even claims that, th that these radars were able to detect the F-35 flying near Iran. It can therefore be estimated that these are preparations for a confrontation with F-35 American Israeli, perhaps even the United Arab Emirates. In recent weeks, there have been reports that the following peace agreement signed by the United Arab Emirates with Israel, it will receive a green light from the United States to purchase the F-35 aircraft. Now, I got to tell you something, friends, with everything that is going on, I mean, far more than what I'm going to be reporting on this afternoon, I am seeing a major movement of the good and evil forces. Well, that's what they call it, good and evil forces, fighting to see who's going to gain global domination. But you know what? Our kingdom is not of this world, and that's what blows me away. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you might be there also. So why then are we looking for a, a, a worldly kingdom? And, and you know, <laughs> I was just told that Jonathan Kahn and Yitzhak Shapira came out together. Uh, well, I'm sure they're going to purport this as the global fight for un unifying for Israel because, by the way, they're going to have Israel is, is going to be the headquarters for the New World Order. But sadly, so many Christians, including Yitzhak Shapira, including Jonathan Kahn, and maybe these guys mean well. I'm not here to beat them up. I'm not, maybe they really mean well. But the thing is, is scripturally, they're in complete error. And as a result, they're, they don't, maybe they don't realize that they're bolstering a beast system to take power on a global scale. And it literally is communism that they're going to, to, uh, to spread. I mean, think about it. Even when, before we get into Armenia, let me just show something to you here. This was an article here. Putin, 95% of the world terrorist attacks are made by the CIA. Well, in conjunction with Mossad out of Israel, sure they are. Sure they are. and But what's interesting is watch what Vladimir Putin says here. Uh, Putin affirms right here in this paragraph, right down here, that the CIA is a rogue element of the deep state, an expression of the will of the world oligarchy and their vision for a new world order. All right, so what is Putin doing? Now, in 
he's now rightly, I'm not saying that he's wrong in what he's saying. Sure, the CIA is part of the deep state. All right. But Putin is actually aligning the Kissinger, Soros, deep state, all them together with CIA operatives, etc., as the evil force there, and that he's standing with the good side. Now, Putin is supposed to be a Christian. Not just kind of like Donald Trump claims to be a Christian, but he's not. He's converted to Judaism. Well, maybe Putin's right behind him. I have no idea. But nonetheless, Putin is so in bed with the Chabad organization in is excuse me in Russia, and following right into the dictates of whatever Netanyahu says. That's why even though he claims that he is an ally to Iran, he only does what he's told to do when it comes to Iran. So Israel can indiscriminately bomb all through Syria and hit every Iranian target that they so desire. And I don't say that the Iranians are a great nation anyway, although I will say that it is one of the fastest growing Christian movements in the entire Middle East is in Iran. That's not the Iranian government by no means, uh, but, uh, but that is something worthy of noting. While this is considered the most evil regime in the Middle East, yet they have more Christians growing in that nation than any other nation there in the Middle East. So, but the, here, here's the fact, here's the fact of the matter though. There is no good side, evil side going to have world domination. Both sides are evil. Jesus said clearly that if his kingdom was of this world, his disciples would fight immediately for him. They would fight. But he said his kingdom was not of this world. So he told Peter, put away your sword. You know, we talk about even, even the Jewish people of Israel talk about when the Mashiach comes, this is going to be a, uh, the time that, you know, he'll rebuild the temple, all this kind of stuff, and all the swords will be put away. There'll be no more fighting and stuff like that. That happened 2,000 years ago, guys. What are, you, what are you missing on this? The Messiah came and he told them, put away your sword. He could have called 10 legions of angels and put down the entire rebellion in Israel of the, of the Pharisaic bloodline at that time, which is what's in control today. And that's supposed to be the good side. It's not the good side. We, we, here's what happened, guys. We have missed because they have infiltrated into Christianity. And that's, that, hey, listen, that is Zoharic and Talmudic writings that the, the Jewish rabbis are permitted to become even a star worshiper. That's what they called Christians, star worshipers, uh, because they believe the star of Bethlehem. Uh, in order to deceive them. Well, they've moved into our ranks and they have deceived the Christians by the tens of thousands. I fell into that same category when I believe the, <laughs> the Darby Schofield Doctrine, totally missing the fact that Jesus Christ, when he came, that not... I mean, I mean, did we forget the fact that Jesus said to his apostles, go only in the way of the lost sheep of the house of Israel? And yet then we run around saying, well, we're looking for the lost house sheep of Israel. We got to go look for the lost house sheep of Israel and everything. And Jesus said to his apostles, you go only to them. Well, if he's only going to them, hello then, somebody tell me something here. Uh, did they not find them? Did Peter not say in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, O house of Israel, this same Jesus whom you crucified? That's why I've been teaching these things, trying to correct these things where we've made the mistakes and bring this out to you guys, all right? So when Putin, when he's saying this here, it looks good. But if you, if you really pay attention to what Putin's doing, Putin is siding with President Trump is what he's doing. I'm already hearing that there are Chinese troops in Canada. Now, it's based on the fact that the Canadian government is allowing them to bring their troops in to protect their assets. No, what those Chinese troops are really there for 
is, and this is what's going to be really sad. The Christians and the Patriots are going to totally not be expecting this. When they fake the coup in this nation, yeah, they are going to bring, they, they, they've already incited the left, Antifa, Black Lives Matter, all these groups here, all evil and wicked. I agree with that. But they're going to incite some, they're going to do some kind of false flag to get you to accept that that's really the wicked, evil side. And I've been told, I've shared this with you already, they're going to do some kind of false flag event, whether it be in Washington, D.C. or New York City. And then somebody sent me something that said, you know, Trump Towers may be one of the targets. It'll be another 9-11 type of event. And this will cause patriots and Christians that support Trump to completely lose it. They'll blame it on Antifa. Uh, and, but... What are they going to do? They're going to allow in this country just to turn completely upside down. And that's what they've been doing the entire time, preparing this nation for destruction. Then the Chinese will come in because what do they want? They want the nation under communism. We're not paying attention, friends. Not paying attention. Let me share something with you so you kind of understand things that are going on here. Uh, Kabbalah, uh, Kabbalah Secrets. This is actually an excerpt from the book. I think it's from the, the, the very book that uh, Deanne Loper wrote, but I think it's important that we read this here before I get into the issue about Armenia. It says here, it's on her website, I believe it's on her website, yeah, uh, Kabbalah Secret Christians Need to Know dot com. The Chabad Lebovich website, Chabad.org, explains in an article titled Mashiach 101 that Edom is the perpetual enemy of Israel and its final foe, the present Gulat exile, is referred to as the Gulat of Edom, and Edom will be defeated ultimately by Mashiach. Referencing the Babylonian Talmud as its source, the article continues, the principal and final function ascribed to Mashiach ben Yosef is of a political and military nature. He shall wage war against the forces of evil that oppress Israel. More specifically, he will do battle against Edom, the descendants of Esau. Edom is a comprehensive designation of the enemies of Israel and will be crushed through the progeny of Joseph. In other words, Mashiach ben Yosef. Now, I strongly believe that they're going to say that Donald Trump is the Mashiach ben Yosef. I know in 27, he actually converted to Judaism. Uh, I know there's a lot of things about him that I've already been seeing. I cannot discuss these things publicly, but it really seems to suggest to me that there is a strong belief that he is going to be considered their Messiah of Joseph. Because you have to understand in Judaism, they can have multiple Mashiach ben Josephs. So, and there's a lot of rabbis already. All you got to do is look it up. Rabbis that believe Donald Trump could be Mashiach ben Joseph, right? Admittedly, and by the way, too, don't forget, I was told, watch Rome, watch Damascus. I, I was told that from some inside heavy, heavy, heavy uh, intel on that. So something's going to happen with the Vatican and Damascus is going to be hit. And as I clearly showed you guys already, maybe I should bring this up. Let's, let's see if we can bring it up real quick. All right. We've got to remember. Uh, memory, Mechon. When it comes to... Um, whoop, wrong one. Sorry. When it comes to the prophecy about, I think, what is it? Is it Isaiah? Um, hmm. I think it's Isaiah 17. Uh, I'll, I've actually kind of forgot a little bit here. Yeah, here we go. Isaiah 17, right? Damascus, behold, is taken away from being a city and shall be a ruinous heap. All right, we know this. We know it's in the Bible. But we often forget why. 
And this is why I like to go down and get you to verse 10. I'm skipping over so we don't go into all the times of reading everything. Verse 9 and 10. And that day shall the strong cities be as a forsaken places which were forsaken before the children of Israel. In the manner of the woods and lofty forests, and it shall be a desolation. And that's what it's turning out to be. But here's what's important. For thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, and thou hast not been mindful of the rock of thy stronghold. All right? This identifies two different types of people. The God of thy salvation, he's speaking about Israel. All right? You forgot the God of your salvation, and thou hast not been mindful of the rock of thy stronghold. Okay? Now, that's very provocative to me, especially right there. The rock. With sur mi ezecha lo zacharat. All right? Why? That's Christians. Jesus Christ is the rock. It's those that had believed that he is the rock. But notice what he says they did. Therefore, thou didst plant pleasant plants of pleasantness and to set it with the slips of a stranger. That's also, that right there, zar, uh, zara, is also used as like in, like in harlotry. In other words, they, they set it up. They set the nation up for the fall. In the day of thy planting, thou didst make it to grow. And in the morning, thou didst make thy seed to blossom a heap of bows in a day of grief and desperate pain. So what they did, this is what the Bible says they caused. All right? They caused this. Uh, it's, it's, it's terrible. And it clearly identifies that both Jew and Christian nations caused this evil planting of the pleasant plants that overthrew Syria. All right, but now here comes the problem. Two things I want you to see now, right? One, remember what uh, what is written right here in, in the uh, Kabbalah Secrets uh, by Deanne Loper's book here, where she talks about that destruction of Esau. And as she said here, also in this last paragraph, as in my book, Kabbalah Secrets, Christians Need to Know, it was Rabbi Yitzhak Shapiro's application of the destruction of Edom to Christianity that first prompted me to research some of the more extreme rabbinic ideas of eschatology. I wish I could say these radical traditions faded into history with the Middle Ages, but this is not the case. The Encyclopedia of Judaica explains the early origins of evolution of how Christianity came to bear the label of Edom by the Talmudist. And Yitzhak Shapira is quoting this, the destruction of Christianity. And that's what uh, she brings out. Now, with that information in mind, we move to Armenia. Christian Armenia under attack. This is by Mark Movizian. Last week, Azerbaijan reignited its long simmering war with Armenia over the territory of Nagorno Karbaka. Now, I'm going to jump back here in a minute to Isaiah, but I wanted to just set the stage for you here. This article I picked up here off of uh, firstthings.com, and I thought it was kind of interesting here. One point he says in here. Erdogan's government sees the conflict as a way to pursue its goal of the pan turanism Turkey has supplied Azerbaijan with military advisors and equipment, including drones, fighters, jets, thousands of Islamist soldiers from Syria who fight Azerbaijan on the front lines. Now, I've also been told that Israel has been supplying sophisticated military equipment to Azerbaijan which is very disturbing. But in this article here, we find uh, this article is covering more of what the uh, Turkish government is doing. He also writes here, one needs to go back at least a century uh, to the collapse of the Ottoman of the Tsarist Empire, as the two, uh, two empires had long contested the border between them, which ran to the southwest of the Caucasus. Armenians, an ancient Christian people, lived on both sides of the border, found themselves in the crosshairs during World War I, fearful that the Armenians on the border would rise up 
on the side with Russia. Some Armenians did fight with the Russians, but many of the others fought the Ottomans, and the Armenians' threat was always exaggerated. The, the Ottoman government undertook an ethnic cleansing campaign, killing millions of Armenians and other Christians in the Armenian Genocide. The genocide eliminated Turkey, once sizable Christian population. It would likely have eliminated the Armenian population on the other side of the border, too, except that a hastily organized Armenian militia stopped the Turkish army in 1918 at the Battle of Sadarabad, which took place just outside the city of Yerevan today, Armenia's capital. Sadarabad is unknown in the West, but the image of the small group of Christian Armenians fighting alone to stop a Muslim Turkish army bent on their annihilation is a powerful part of the Armenian uh, consciousness today. So when I look at the war that is happening right now in Armenia, this is a war to stomp out Christianity out of the Middle East. It says here as well, the Soviets initially promised to place Karbak whose Armenian entity dated back many centuries and whose population was more than 90% Armenian in the new Soviet Republic of Armenia. But Stalin, as a commissar for nationalities, decided to place the region under Azerbaijan instead as part of a divided and conquer strategy. Armenians never accepted the decision, and when the Soviet Union collapsed, the nation and the Caucasus gained independence, the conflict over the region resumed. So, and it just goes to show Stalin, of course, Stalin was a Jesuit. So what do you expect, right? Sure, he's going to be on that side. Now, some inside information that I have about uh, what's going on over there, which supports what I just read to you out of Isaiah chapter 17. Right? It says right here, got this email here from a journalist out of the Middle East, um, uh, He's Israeli, I'll, I will say that much. According to the reports in recent days on social media, Syrian mercenaries are fighting alongside Azerbaijan against Armenia. The presence of Syrian mercenaries is reportedly accompanied by the support of Turkish President Erdogan. The source claims that the Syrian mercenaries were hired by the Turkish security company to fight against Armenians in uh, Nagorona Karbakh region. And that is, by the way, the hottest contentious area right now in this, in this fight, by the way. The source claims that only the Turkish security company that can carry out such a project is Sadat, and it is owned by a close friend of the Turkish president. The Turkish government, as Azerbaijan, strongly denied this publication. Some of the sources are saying that the Turkish president is on the verge of crossing Russia's red line, which to me is just totally garbage. I mean, yes, Putin is Christian, but will he stand for the Armenians? It depends on when his handlers allow him to. That's just the way it is. Now, I asked the question uh, to my Israeli counterpart, what do we know uh, as far as the type, because uh, it says Syrian mercenaries, but I said, what, what do we classify as Syrian mercenaries? Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda, that type. So this was the response I got. As I understand, these are Syrians from opposite-held northwest Syria, Free Syrian Army. Go figure, right? As a result of the heavy losses among Syrian fighters in the past week, the Idlib community has launched a campaign to create awareness of the danger of enlisting in mercenary armies. Some of the Syrian fighters are enlisting because of the great economic hardship they are suffering from, which I do believe that to be true. As for Russia, I came across some piece of information that indicates that Russia is about to intervene in the conflict, but, may, but maybe that will only happen at a later stage. This is a complex situation for Russia. Of course, they have to get, you know, permission, which is relatively good relations with two countries and is trying to get them to reach some kind of agreement. Russia is currently allowing Turkish support only to create pressure on Armenians to seek Putin's support. So allow the Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan just to beat the mess out of the Armenians so that the Armenians will cave in and, and do whatever Russia says. In the meantime, you know, Christians are dying every day. All right? and, and listen, I care about loss of life on both sides. Muslim or Christian, I understand. But I also realize 
who is behind this war and why they're doing it. As we've already shown you, there is a push to destroy Christianity. And that is a cold, hard truth when it comes down to it. Now, let me show share some other things here with you as well. This here, uh, I just caught this right before I came on. Abu Jabir, a Hamza commander appointed by Turkey to recruit and send uh, militants to Azerbaijan, was gravely in, injured in Jabal Barad by a bomb placed in his car. Hamza man says they believe it was an assassination attempt by the family of a Syrian killed in Azerbaijan. That's the guy laying there on the stretcher there. He's the one recruiting the uh, Free Syrian, which no doubt Free Syrian, uh, Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda, all the different groups that are fighting uh, in Idlib there that have been trying to overthrow the country there have been sent down there. Now, what's interesting, though, many of these people were thinking they were going to Libya to fight for Turkey. But another interesting uh, article came out on Russian media. Uh, this guy here kind of translates the gist of it. A real Tribune investigative uh, journalist says recruitment of the Syrian mercenaries to Azerbaijan is implemented by Sadat. And so there again, it's only giving credence to my own uh, Israeli journalist that uh, brought that out. Private military company unofficially supported by the Turkish intelligence service recruit recruits were told to be leaving for Libya, but then appeared in Azerbaijan. So, yeah, we got the information of what's going on there. And then we get this report here also. This is from uh, Shushan. She is the uh, spokes, uh, spokeswoman for the uh, uh, Armenian military there. Uh, today, she was saying that the uh, Azerbaijan Air Force has targeted the mill equipment on combat alert in the territory of Armenia adjacent to the border of Karavaka. The attack was carried out based on the mere assumption that subject equipment was allegedly going to strike Azerbaijan's civilian settlements, which she claims was completely false. Uh, here's the thing, though, friends. At the end of the day, this war is all about killing the Christians. And... There is, especially when it comes to Erdogan, very, very, very happy to do so, as he did in Syria as well. And I really would like to know, where were the Americans protecting the Christians that were in Damascus when all this was going on? Clearly, let me, let me show you something, all right? Just so you can see some, I want you to see, all right? Let's just type this as a curiosity thing, right? Let's, let's put Syria... Christians love president and just see what happens. Let's just see what happens, right? Um, all right, so they, they immediately go, they, they bless Putin, but also Bashar al-Assad. Now, the thing is, is you have to understand, I, I Bashar al-Assad, I believe, has been wrongly accused in this war from the very beginning. But is it a possibility that, uh, that uh, he's also playing both sides of this? Sure. Sure it is. Uh, let me do this, see if I can get to some latest here. Uh, it's Syria is a cradle of Jewish Christian religion and currently welcomes a diverse religious culture. People Syrian elected President Assad because they love him and he loves his people. If Syria did not possess oil and gas or pipelines, no world government would care about Syria. Well, that is partially true. That is partially true. I do know from a good friend of mine in Israel there uh, who has been a part of some of this uh, work that this is the big issue is getting the pipelines uh, across there and, of course, through uh, going through Syria. And it doesn't matter if it's the Turkish pipeline or if it's the American pipeline, they are cutting right straight across Syria to do so. So yes, that is part of the reason re, reason there. But uh, it is, again, and, and I like the way this guy puts it here, Syria is a cradle of Jewish Christian religion. It's exactly right. I mean, the mothers of Israel were all Syrian. Leah, Rachel, Bila, and Zilpa, all four for the 12 tribes of Israel. We're all Syrian. Laban made a covenant with Jacob never to cross that set of stones to do harm to the other. And he even made it, it's, it's actually prophetic. He said, if you ever cross, if you ever take another wife other than my daughters, God be a judge between me and you. 
That was a spiritual application that he was speaking about. And Israel has taken every lover under the planet since then. In fact, God judged Israel. As Laban said, if you ever take another wife other than my daughters, let God judge between you and me. The house of Israel went into idolatry and married in amongst the Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, right? Don't go blaming everything on Esau. Esau did it too, yes. But who did it who did, who did it as well? So did the house of Israel. And then what happened? The priests and Levites, according to Ezra's prophecy, chapter 9, they did the exact same thing. They went and married in amongst the women of the land or took their daughters of their land there and brought forth what? Nephilim children. They mingled the seed, according to the book of Ezra. They took daughters that were not Syrian, that were not of Rachel's household, and they mingled the seed. And Jesus clearly identified who that mingled seed was when he dealt with the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 23. So this is where we're at today. And now there is an all out war against Christianity. And you're going to find there is going to be a major move amongst so-called Christians under the guise of their love and support for Israel. They say God has an unconditional covenant with Israel. God has never had an unconditional covenant with Israel. Never. His covenant has always been on conditions. All right. And that final condition was through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why I say to every Jewish friend that I have that doesn't know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah yet, my brother, sister, I beg of you to get to know him now for the hour is soon going to be where time will be no more. Yeah, there'll be a lot of Christians that are going to die for what they believe, for really standing for the truth. It, the ones that are going to side and, and think that, oh, you know, Trump or some other guy is going to be the Mashiach for Israel or, or or maybe Jared Kushner later. I don't think Jared Kushner, but who knows? You know, who knows what they're going to come up with later, right? But the point is, none of that is true. The fulfillment of the prophecies to the, to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah have were fulfilled 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. I've done a lot of teachings on it. Take the time to listen to them. And we really appreciate uh, your stand and support for this ministry our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, and a couple of, one thing I want to share with you guys too, just uh, in, in, in closing here as well. Um, and maybe I can find this real quick here over. If you go to our Facebook page to Israeli News Live, um, I want to share a few things with you about, uh, about a post that I placed over there. Um, as many of you know, my sister passed away uh, on October the 6th, and her husband, uh, Brian, which that's not Brian's picture, uh, this is the post we put in there. Brian set up a, a it's not a GoFundMe page, but it's called everlove.com page there uh, to help cover the cost of my sister's funeral. The family did come together uh, because the, he is a veteran. Uh, Brian is, uh, he was in the army back in, uh, I think 1992 to 1996. And, um, so the, 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 the VA was willing to bury my sister where her desire was to be buried with my mom and my mom. Uh, let me see. I, maybe I have something up here. I can show you on that too. Uh, yeah, that's my mother right there with her father, my grandfather, Lou. And uh, my mom was buried at the Naval Cemetery at Barrancas Air in Pensacola, Florida. And this is where my sister wanted to be buried as well. And uh, that's me and my sister right there when we were little bitty fellows. Uh, and, uh, but at any rate there, she wanted to be buried there. And so we have been trying to pull this together. We were able to raise about half of what it takes to cover two different funeral homes. Unfortunately, because we're being up there, it's two different funeral homes. And that's my sister, Laura, as well. Actually, she's holding our, our brother, John, who also passed away uh, several years back uh, in another sad occasion. So my mother has passed, my sister, my brother. and uh, But at any rate, uh, John has put together this uh, funding thing here to try to help cover the rest of the cost uh, of 
getting them home. So we posted this on Israeli News Live on Facebook. If God lays on your heart, you'd like to help. Um, we do appreciate that uh, tremendously. You know, about three years ago, these two went through a very difficult time. They both ended up uh, with severe uh, respiratory, uh, was shutting down on them both uh, to a severe case of the flu. And both of them were in the hospital and they got dismissed. They both nearly died at that time, three years ago. Brian, though, my wife's, uh, excuse me, my sister's husband, uh, is seen in the picture here. Brian nearly died. He spent two weeks in a coma and tragically lost both his legs, one of his arms. Uh, that's just how sick he got through, respiratory, through his whole respiratory system shutting down. Uh, it has been a struggle for them uh, over the last three years. Very, very difficult. And my sister worked for Walgreens and then uh, and things just got harder and harder for them. So she ended up, she lost her job there due to a lot of complications, issues that they were having uh, with things that they were going to there. And uh, it caused her to lose everything, her insurance, everything she had. So, uh, so it's put a hardship on the family and we, we have been working very diligently to try to help them with that as well. Uh, so I don't want to spend too much time on this. I just wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about that. It might be uh, better, help you to better understand why that need is there. Uh, so we thank you. If you want to make a donation, you're certainly welcome to. I'll leave a link also in the description below. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live, and God bless you.